This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Jacksonville State receivers coach Cody Wells. Coach Wells reflects on this past year's football season that was impacted by COVID, discusses last week's thrilling upset victory over Florida State, and gives insight on how to keep a team focused going forward after a big win. But first, a word from our community partner. When your parent has cancer and when you're going to bed at night and when you're in your room and and you think that the world has left you alone, you you are just out in the wilderness in this unknown disease that you can't explain because it's sometimes the doctors doesn't ever seem like they can explain it. And it just leaves you really confused sometimes. And Camp Custom is just is important because you, it makes you understand that not only is it okay to sometimes be confused, but it's okay to have fun and it's okay to cherish the good times that you have and understand that even though that there's darkness in our world and that there's cancer in our world, there's other people that are dealing with it that are gonna help us to get through it. After camp, before camp, it's a big difference, a very big difference. There is no love that is like Kit Cousin Love because it is just so unique. It, there's no judgment and you can come here and you can be yourself and you can talk to other people who have been through nearly exactly what you've been through. When I'm at Camp Cousin, I'm the happiest person I've ever been that whole year. It's so much better than I would have ever expected. Like I didn't expect to feel like this just like atmosphere of happiness and like positivity, even though we're all like fighting cancer, like in our own way. Camp magic is this feeling in your chest that you can't contain. It, it like has to come out of you. It's, it's just there, it's, it's in you, all right? It's, it's here, it's in your heart. It's really honestly not about cancer here, it's about loving each other and bringing each other up. This is a special place. It's home for me and other kids, so yeah. Coach Cody Wells, how's it going, man? Good. How you doing, Mario? I'm doing good, man. Well, uh, for, for all of our listeners, this was our very first podcast we ever had for uh, Inside the Headset was with uh, Coach Cody Wells. Uh, you know, when we had the idea we wanted to bring a podcast to the AFCA, I just kind of went through the Rolodex in the phone and, uh, you know, had the opportunity to not only coach Cody Wells, but actually, uh, actually got to work alongside of him for a little bit. Um, on my way out the door at, at, at ULM, and uh, he's he's went on to have a tremendous career, and you know we're back on with him a couple years later, and uh, he, he's got although you can't see it very well, he's got a smile underneath that that beard there. He's uh, had a, had a tremendous win versus Florida State this past weekend, and uh, before we hop into that, definitely just want to kind of talk about you know the the, the this this COVID last um you know year and a half that that you guys have been going through i know fcs you know you guys played in the spring um j just talk to us a little bit about how you guys attack covid and um you know and then we'll, we'll, we'll start from there and, and go into your season yeah so we uh we our guys have handled and our staff has handled covid very well throughout this uh year and a half we've actually played three seasons in one calendar year yeah. so we opened up with florida state last fall got four games in uh Ended up with FIU down in Miami, and then we hopped right back into uh, that spring season. Uh, made a little run, got got knocked out there by Delaware uh, during the playoffs, and then uh, we hopped right back into it to get back to this season. And uh, we're one and one, and played two FBS opponents, and then going into North Alabama this week. And so it's uh, the COVID. Our, our team's 90, 90 to ninety five percent vaccinated, okay. and so. Uh, that we've handled that well. Our guys have answered the call of, of doing their part, of uh, being vaccinated and trying to trying to help the safety of our of our program. Uh, but uh, the guys have handled a tremendous, uh, you know, things that could have gone wrong due to COVID. They've handled it very very well by keeping their mask on throughout that time frame and keeping their spacing. And we had to alter meetings and how that goes about, which cost us some time. Uh, just being up at the field house longer. But just making sure that the guys were in a safe environment, making sure that they were able to get to the game. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, 
you know, I, did, I actually didn't realize. It. And, and when you say that, I do re- recall watching you guys in the fall. Knew you made the playoff run, so it almost didn't register that you did have three seasons. So that's that's awesome that you guys have uh, came through this rather unscathed and 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 rolling right into this twenty twenty one football season. Now, uh, obviously, everybody's going to be a little curious about the whole Florida State game, but. You know, you just rewind one week back. You guys played UAB, uh, not very far from you guys. I know, uh, you know, probably got a ton of guys on the roster from from Birmingham. And, uh, you know, th- these guys most likely know each other. I wouldn't be surprised if you had some UAB guys on your roster. And, uh, you know, he, he showed up, drew a blank, didn't play very well, had had a lot of opportunities to uh, to get better. What, you know, what was your what was your walking away from, from that UAB game? You know, what was your mindset and what was the goal to – get these guys ready for another big time game? You know, they always say it's the old coach cliche, you know, you make your biggest jump from week one to week two. And right. that's going to kind of show what kind of team you have moving forward. And it's, uh, you know, the the guys, we had opportunities, you know, and we just didn't capitalize and we kind of got in the way uh, in our own way throughout that game and never really caught that rhythm, never, never really caught that uh, opportunity that we needed to, needed to have to give us a little chance to get some momentum and get going. And, yeah. and we drew a blank and, you know, we, we really challenged the guys to, you know, get rid of the pre-snap penalty, get rid of the, yeah. you know, the boneheaded stuff that gets you beat, you know, especially in those FBS games where you can't have them. And, you know, the great thing about here is our guys believe that they can play with anybody. They, right. be, they truly believe that they're not mismatched. They truly believe that, you know, they have an opportunity to win every game. And, and that's the first step to anything, you know, as, as you know, while I was playing at ULM, you know, you got to you got to have the belief, you got to have the desire, and and all that kind of stuff in order to step out and have a chance in those type of games. And you know, we just didn't do the right things, uh, you know, things that we can control. Right. And that uh, we just challenge those guys to be able to control your controllables. You know, don't get in the way of of you know the progress by having a holding penalty. Don't get in the way of you know, the false start pre-snap penalties. We lived in third and 15. We lived right. in third and 12 throughout that game, and no offense coordinator can make those calls and be successful. Yeah. You know, again, and, and the type of offense we have, you got to stay on the sticks just like everybody else in the country. So right. it, they, they did a tremendous job. We still had some boneheaded penalties and still had some uh, some things we can clean up moving forward. But I think they made a good improvement from week, week one. one to week no question, no question, man. And it, I, I think it's really interesting too. And I, I can bring this up with you because we have shared a lot of the experiences. Obviously, been at uh, where we were together, both as player and coach. You know, you 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 play some tough teams early in your schedule, and you know, I, you're going to have those week one mistakes like everybody in the country does. You're going to have the offsides, just getting used to the cadence. You're going to run this, the field goal team off and the right guard is going to be lagging behind. You know, just all this silly stuff that happened in, in those first games. And, you know, when you do have some tough opponents early on, it's 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 really easy for that boat to shift one way or the other just based on some of that success that you have. Unfortunately, you play some tough teams, you get a couple tough losses, and then it gets hard to kind of keep a hold of those guys. And so, obviously, you guys were able to roll in a week two game. You you weren't probably picked by, by too many other people, minus the guys in the locker room, to win. And and, and you walk off with a, uh, you know, not just a win, but you, you walk off with a win that uh, it kind of resonated around the country. Everybody was talking about it. Uh, a lot of players, uh, you know, probably getting interviewed this week and having some cool stories on some different networks and things like that. Uh, but – before we kind of talk about some of that, let's let's talk about the game itself. Um, you know, I actually watched the game, and, and what's really interesting for myself, especially as I stepped out of coaching, is uh, you know I don't really have a favorite team anymore. I got these guys that I've, I've coached with. I got Cody Wells and Jason Nichols, and you know, buddies just all across the country. That you know, hey, I, I, I I'm watching Jackson State versus North North Alabama. Yeah, I know there's probably some bigger time games on, but bottom line, this is my dude. This is my guy I've worked with. And, um, you know, that Florida State game, I have some buddies on the other staff that have been in part of 35 and 35. I think you know know them pretty well, been a part of that program as well. And so, you know, I don't have any skin in the game, but there was a part in that game where um, it was 17-7 to seven and, and Florida State was up and you guys are driving all the way down the field. And all of a sudden, you guys score a touchdown and make a 14-7. 
uh, 14, 17, and, uh, you know, close the gap there a little bit. But there's a penalty. There's a lineman downfield. He's standing right next to the referee. He's the guy who runs the slant on the RPO. And uh, I, I, I'm i sitting on the couch watching with my wife. Obviously, she's great friends with your wife. And so we got some we got some skin in the game. We're watching. I'm like, man, it's crazy how penalties can affect it. Because right after that play, uh, your quarterback takes a sack, and it's third and 18 or 19 or something like that. And I'm just third like, 19. third and 18. Yeah, okay. And 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 I'm saying, I'm saying to myself, they went from – you know, making this a making this a, a tight game to punt the ball off and, and probably probably running out of chances here. And then uh, next thing you know, it's an interception. Florida State picks the ball off, but you know, me watching from TV, the little yellow bar pops up. There's a flag. It's targeting call, and, and and just like that, you guys are right back into it. You know, talk to us about just that ebb and flow of the game and how you guys you know are able to keep you know, your, your players heading the game with the penalties. I know you were plagued with them last week, but sometimes it's about responding. So, you know, just talk to us a little bit about that and your mentality there. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the live in the moment, play in the now. You know, it's the uh, – that we have one come against us, you know, so let's see what we can do. And then, uh, you know, we sometimes you got to have a break. You know how it was in the Arkansas game when I was a senior at ULM. You know, it's you're down 21 and you just – if you keep having that belief right, and you – Fighting a good fight and get it to the fourth quarter, which we had at that point. Right, you just got to keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is keeping you there. Right, you know you're out talented. That's okay, but if you play hard and you have belief, you give yourself a chance, and that's all we ask out of our guys. And you know, it's it's funny that you say that on the third and eighteen. I didn't even see the flag. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure out whether he picked it. I'm looking up at the TV copy. I'm up in the box. <laughs> right, to figure out what happened because the ball was near the ground, but it pops up off of the hand that's laying on the ground, and right. they turn up. And, you know, it's uh, so I'm trying to figure out if it was, if it's going to get reviewed. I'm trying to figure out all those de- details. And then our defense staff says there's a yellow flag on the field. And so that's uh, that gave us a little bit of wind in the sails, too. Because you're right. That, and at that point, we're out We're out of the game. It's a two score game. And, right. you know, we're a pick right there. There's just not much time unless something crazy happens. Yeah. And, you know, they, they we get the targeting. Uh, so moves the ball, we get the first down. And then our guys, uh, find a way to get it in and give ourselves a chance. And then defense comes up with a big stop there and give us another opportunity and, right. you know, they take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, it, for those that don't know, uh, Coach Wells was a longtime quarterback, play quarterback, I think coach quarterbacks majority of your career and actually yeah. made the transition to a, a pass game coordinator but moved over and worked with the wide receivers. So a uh, very knowledgeable guy. When it comes to quarterback play, and I know that that two minute drive as you guys are marching down the field, it's uh, 17 14. You try, it, you're in that weird spot with timeouts. You're in that weird spot with time where, you know, you, you got enough time to score, but you want to get the field. You know, you're just trying to move the ball down the field, get the ball in the end zone. And uh, there was a couple plays where your quarterback, you know, maybe he should have stepped out of bounds, right? Or maybe should have should have should have threw the ball down rather than taking a tackle inbounds, having to eat up some timeouts and and things like that. So just been a former quarterback coach, and, and knowing you got a great quarterback coach on your staff there, you know, what are some of the, some of those things that you go through in that two minute drill? I know you guys remind your your players, but um, you know, what are some of the things going through your head as you're you're seeing this thing starting to get really really tight and that window closing just because of field position plus uh you know uh uh, uh plus Tom. Yeah, our quarterback coach Tyler Allen does a great job with those guys. And right. you know, we got a good player in Zarek Cooper that, you know, makes good decisions in there. And uh, you know, it was a tough uh, when we told him initially going into the drive, you know, it was a it was a minute thirty, somewhere around there roughly, uh one time out. You know, you're down by three, you gotta get it to field goal range. Right. You know, get it to field goal range, give yourself an opportunity. We got a great kicker, um, who's who can boom it from fifty five, fifty four, somewhere around there. So we just gotta get it somewhere in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. Give ourselves a chance, and uh, we can take a couple of shots in the end zone if we have an opportunity with a little bit of time. Right. And so, um, there's one play on that on that two minute drive where you say he probably should have just gone ahead and thrown it out of bounds mm-hmm. and not eat up the time and try to scramble around and make something happen. Right. And it ended up costing us about eight or nine seconds. But in the uh, in the grand scheme of things, he did a pretty good job of operating mm-hmm. uh, right there in that two minute drive and getting into the running back, allowing him to get. He was in some trouble. He dropped right. it down to the run him to get out of bounds and um that's a true freshman that caught the ball so he's you know he's he had some pretty smart you know because you remind the guys you catch it outside the numbers get out of bounds you catch it inside them let's get vertical get the first down don't fight for extra yardage all those nuances and you know things uh that you talk about in the two minute axioms and you know just trying to teach guys the game but when it happens 
you know, it happens fast for those guys at 18 to 22 years old. Yeah, absolutely. You really hope they, you have ingrained it in their brain yeah. and they've heard it enough that they can just kind of respond to it. Right. And that, that's, what's always interesting is, uh, you know, we, all these situations, I mean, they, you know, how, how many times are you going to be in a two minute drill throughout the course of the season? You know, ultimately, if you do it once a game, I mean, at the most, you're going to do it 12 times. Right. Yep. And, you know, obviously, if you do it twice a game at the end of the half, uh, you know, you do it 24 times, which in the grand scheme, then it's not it's just not that many times. So you always want to make sure that you try to make it second nature. So, you know, hey, I'm a receiver. I catch the ball. I'm out of bounds. Hey, if I'm a quarterback, is it worth scrambling for this long? Or, or is it better to, like you said, just drop, you know, throw the ball out of bounds, kill it, and, and stop the clock? And so, um, you know, obviously you guys walk out with the win, so you guys do 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 good enough with the two-minute drill. So now we're sitting at about, what, I think it was six seconds. Um, six seconds. You, you know, definitely not in field goal range. Uh, kind of tough uh, tough decision-making from a, from a defensive standpoint. Um, you know, is it enough time to – Catch the ball, call a timeout, get a field goal off. You know, it, you know, six seconds too long. You know, so um, obviously the defense has to make a very, very tough, uh, tough call there as well. And you guys go with four verts. Now I'm not. I, I'm a big, big, big. Uh, I'm, I'm always very cognizant of, of what I talk about whenever I'm on these podcasts with coaches because I don't want to talk about their playbook too much. But you know, anybody watching games saw they ran four verts. I mean, you guys ran four, uh, ran four verts. Uh, you go with four verts. There's no prevent defense back there. Now, I'm a, a long-time receiver guy. I actually got to work with you a little bit as you moved to inside receivers uh, just, just a tad bit. And, uh, you know, one of the things that used to kill me was, was a lot of times freshmen would come in and they would run, run this big U release where they always tried to run straight towards the sideline and outrun the, the DB from behind. But this guy's own turn, and he jabbed him outside and stayed very close inside of him uh, and, and shaved, you know, his, that chin strapped off and, and stayed vertical and got him stacked. You know, and we, we exchanged texts right after the game. I was like, man, who taught that guy that? Uh, you know, just talk to us a little bit about, you know, how proud you were of uh, the DJ in that situation in terms of how he handled that route running and, uh, you know, stayed calm, poised, and kept the play alive. Hey, just so you know, we're fighting the U-release every day, Mario. <laughs> yeah, everybody is, man. <laughs> everybody in the country does, too. If not, then I'm just bad coach. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> he did a really good job of understanding the situation, and you might get – he might get a clouded corner right there. Right. Uh, the guys go outside release, and he's about to get ran into the sidelines and given water. And so uh, he did a really good job. He's he's a four three four four guy. I mean he's he's got elite speed, uh, and he did a really good job of sitting there stabbing him outside, ripping back inside, getting him back stack, and holding his position and and making a play. Absolutely. And the most impressive to me, the most impressive play by him, heads he play. He's a veteran player. He's he graduated from Duke. He you know, he's getting his criminal justice degree. He's going to work in the FBI is his goal. And, and so he's got he's a guy that's mature and he's got a plan for himself. And uh, the most mature thing I thought right there is a young player right there might try to stop the clock or not fight to get extra yardage or go out of bounds or, or some things of that manner. And he had enough hedgy, uh, hedginess about himself. To, he knew he had a score. And he told me after the game that he was racing to the pylon. But – he realized he saw the two in pursuit that if he tried to get to the pylon, he was going to get pushed out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And so he, he saw out of the glimpse of his, of his peripherals that he saw a white jersey coming. So he, he took them as far as they could go and then cut it back. And Maude Edwards had phenomenal effort right. to get in there and make that, that, make that last block on the four yard line to, to spring it and, and to kind of solidify the deal. Yeah. And that, you know, I, th I think more than anything, I think that was, that was probably the coolest moment was you saw. You saw your guy make a just a, run a great route. You know, very most people just look at it just running vertical. Obviously, as coaches probably look at things a little bit different in terms of the technique, but uh, you know, getting them stacked, stand aside, uh, you know, catching the ball. But you see the effort of I think it was number nine or you know, yeah, well, Edwards. Yeah, yeah, Edwards. You see the effort of him flying down the field, and, and you just see a little different tempo from the other team. And and I've been there before when. You're expected to win the game. You're kind of in that shock. <laughs> you could kind of see that shock in those other guys, and and versus you guys. I mean, I don't know. Ex ex excitement, expectation to kind of come and win and come and, and make the upset. And you just saw your guys flying around, and uh, I was super proud of you. Just <laughs> knowing you coached those guys up for that situation, and I know as you went back and watched the film, you know, you, I'm sure you harped on that. Now there was something else pretty cool I saw about DJ. Uh, obviously, he's a Duke grad. Um, 
I played played in the ACC for 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 a long time, but that game was a little too far from the parents. Uh, most of those Duke games are a little too far for the parents to make. Uh, so the family made it to that game. Our first game is that is that correct? Yeah. So it was his mom, his little sister, and his little brother's first college football game. Yeah. Play. <laughs> uh, you know, and he's gonna he announced yesterday he's gonna be in under this, but he's gonna be a father and. His, you know, his, his, his girl was there, and his mom was there, and his sister was there, and his, his brother was there. And, you know, he take, he, he's the oldest. He takes a lot of pride in taking care of those those people back home. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it was a very, very special moment to him for his mom to be a part of that. And yeah. I thought that was a, it's an amazing story. Sports Illustrated's written about it. Right. Good Morning America. I mean, it's an unbelievable story. And I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that story. Yeah, no doubt, man. And honestly, like uh, – you know, you 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 played your ball, uh, and, and I, I know you're a coach, but we're more talking about the uh, actual plan days. Uh, you know, I played my ball, and, and what's funny is when I get back with my buddies, and I get with my family, it's never about hey, you remember when we played uh, Texas A and M, and hey, you know we beat them in overtime. We never talk about that. What we talk about is the funny stories. Like, man, you remember when we <laughs> were at the game and you were late for the bus? And, you know, that's what we chuckle and laugh about. Uh, you know, you, you, hey, I remember you came to that game, Mom and Dad, and I, I took that field goal, uh, I took that kickoff return for 15, 20 yards, and I was just excited you guys were there to see that. And so it's those moments that ultimately, like, last the longest man you know even at florida state those guys are those guys remember that forever but at the end of the day it's going to be that that moment my parents were there man so that's what it's all all about man now before i let you go here because i know you gotta get the game planning but that's going to kind of lead to my next and final question is you've been there before uh we all have been there before as coaches we have these games that you know they're just miraculous great great endings upsets whatever but the reality of it is, is you come home and you got to just hit that erase button, hit that reset button and go do it again. So you guys are getting ready for North Alabama. How are you keeping these guys focused? Because I'm sure Tuesday it's going to be media day. As all they're going to get asked about, it'll probably be very little about North Alabama to be about these moments that we just talked about. How do you hit the reset button and get these guys refocused um, for, for, for a game that uh, you guys expect to go win? There's going to be, you know, a lot of corrections need to be made, yeah. you know, in reality. And so they, we've given them their 24 hours and, or whatever it is to, you know, enjoy it, embrace it. We're not going to take it from you. Nobody can take it from right. you the rest of your life. And so uh, enjoy it. You know, you did your part. But, you know, with those wins comes a price. And you've got to be mature enough. You've got to be, you know, able to handle success. Right. And if we want to be who we truly talk about wanting to be, those moments are going to happen. Right. Whether it be playoffs, whether it be late conference games, whatever it might be. And so uh, those things are going to happen. This was not the Super Bowl. Right. And so we've got to find a way to get our feet back on the ground and just get back to work and do what we talk about all the time is just being a blue collar team and coming into work every day and finding something you can get better at this day. Yeah. And then tomorrow we'll find something new off of the film. Yeah. But what can we get better at today? And there's a lot from that game that we can get better at. Pad level, uh, top of the route, consistently getting route depth. There's a lot of things that we're going to talk about today in meetings that we can get better at. Right. And so, uh, we're not playing enough receivers. And the reason is that because it's our practice habit. And so we're going to talk about a lot of things that need to get corrected moving forward that can help us get better week in and week out. Yeah, I love it, man. That's the one thing I, I feel like uh... – the common fan, uh, the people that's you know watch Saturdays and Sundays and don't don't think about football for the rest of the week, they just don't really know what this part looks like. And, and you're exactly right. Uh, everybody's telling these young men how good they are, but I can only imagine how many Mr. Simons and you know and <laughs> errors and all that kind of stuff. As a coach, you, you're going crazy. You're happy you got the W, but you know you got to get back to that drawing board and go to work. So I'm gonna not get in your way of doing that, Coach. I sure appreciate you. If you don't mind, just drop your uh, Twitter account. I know. Uh, I, I know people love to kind of keep up with your story and did a great job with the receivers, man. I know you continue to do so. Uh, but if you don't mind, just drop your, your, your social media account so guys can keep up with you. Yeah, I'm at, at Coach Wells, JSU. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty active on there. Shoot me a DM if you need anything. I'm kind of an open book when it comes to that case. And, you know, copycat league around this joint. I and mean, you can't <laughs> hide anything. you got PFF analytics. you got all kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, you got to get you guys to play hard. You got to get you guys to believe, and you got to get you guys schematically to, you know, do what they need to do every snap. And the teams that do that the most consistently 
have an opportunity to win. Absolutely. And so it's, you know, it's an open book. If anybody's got any questions or got any comments or ever need anything, just holler at me. And I appreciate everything that y'all do with the AFCA and, you know, everything that Coach Barry and you, Mario, and, and Cross and Braun and all those guys uh, over there in Texas do. And we really, really appreciate y'all and everything that you do fighting for us coaches. For sure, man. I really appreciate you guys. You guys make it all worth it, man. Have a good one. Best of luck this week, and I uh, look forward to catching you in San Antonio this year, okay? All right, man. Good seeing you again. All right, brother. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at WeAreAFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.